Today we're going to talk about the Shargeek Storm 2. This is the power station I wanted to hate, but couldn't. Let's get to it. I'm amateur radio operator Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Off, YouTuber HOA Ham, and right now I'm operating one of my favorite ham radio transceivers being powered by my Shargeek Storm 2. Let me tell you why I wanted to hate this power station and why I've fallen in love with it. Let's start with the reasons why I wanted to hate this power station. And yes, it's a power station. It allows for pass-through charging. You can charge it with a solar panel while you are using it. You can plug multiple devices into it. Are you gonna plug your coffee maker into it? Well, no, you're not. It doesn't have an AC outlet. It won't give you 110, but it will give you multiple sources of DC power. Why did I want to hate it? Well, the first reason is a little bit petty because Shark Geek just ignored me. I'm a smaller YouTube channel. I'm approaching 10,000 subscribers. Right now I'm at about 8,500 subscribers. And sometimes YouTubers do ask for equipment to review. If I bought everything that I ever reviewed, I would even have lost more money on my channel than I've been losing for the first two years. That's on me. I chose to do this. I'm choosing to reach out to you and share kind of my life with you and what I'm learning, what I'm experiencing, the gear that I'm reviewing. So sometimes people give me gear to use and we start with that little thing up at the bottom uh, left corner of the screen that it says includes paid promotion. And all that means is somebody gave me some Something to review. They're not paying me for my review and the double digit hours that I put into using it, learning it, videotaping and editing. I'm not making any money, but at least sometimes I don't have to buy all of the things that I review, even though I buy much of it. I asked Shargeek three times if they would give me this to review because I wasn't sure I wanted to pay the money for this because it's expensive. So I thought, well, if they give it to me and I really am not impressed, no loss they wouldn't give it to me. They just totally ignored me. Now, that's going to happen. There are lots of people asking for items for free to review. So I really don't hold that against Shargi because obviously I went and I purchased this myself. But I really wanted to hate it because they wouldn't even reply to me. It's not that, hey, your channel is too small. They, they just ignored me. So, yep, Bob's being a little bit petty. That said, it seemed compelling, so I bought it. The second reason why I wanted to hate it is because of the polymer case. The thing that makes it beautiful is also the thing that makes me go, I don't want that. And all I mean by that is I don't need any more gear that's a queen. I don't need any more gear that needs protected, put in a soft cloth bag, because I don't want to scratch it. This uh, FX4CR is that way. That's a beautiful radio. I always make sure that I pack it up very good to protect it anytime it goes into a go bag. And I need to do that with this as well because it's gorgeous. It has a see-through screen. You can see that PCB, that PWA, that printed wire assembly with all of the components on it. You can read the designations, the names, the SKUs on the components. You can see the batteries that are in this thing. It's beautiful. For most of my radios, I take them, I toss them in a go bag, and I don't think an awful lot about it. You're not going to toss this thing around because it's too nice. I didn't want another piece of gear like that. I have fallen so much in love with it, I don't mind putting it in a protective pouch when it goes into either my bag for work, my computer bag, or my ham radio operating bag. The third reason why I wanted to hate it was because it's expensive. It really is expensive. At its full retail price, it's just expensive. How many times have I said it? It's expensive. That said, it does an awful lot. You're not just getting a battery here. You're getting a power station. And we'll start talking about that here in a couple of minutes as to why it's worth the money that they charge for it. But those are the reasons. One was petty. One was because I didn't want it to get scratched up. And two was I didn't want to pay that much for it. In retrospect, I'm glad I bought it. We'll lead up to the most compelling reason why I was convinced this is awesome gear, which is the ability to use it with my QRP transceiver. By QRP, I mean up to 20 watts. My FX4CR can go up to 20 watts. First, I'm just showing how incredibly packaged this is. So well protected in this durable box. 
And we do have a protective pouch along with a very high quality USB-C to USB-C connector. The very thing I said was a drawback, that beautiful case, is one of the things that makes this impressive. Show up somewhere with your FX4CR and the Shark Geek Storm 2 and oh, do you attract a crowd with that incredible screen and the beautiful PCB. This has eight, count them, eight Samsung high quality 18650 batteries. The chart on the right shows all the specifications for the in-out ports. The two ports on the right are USB-A and C. They are out only. The USB-C in the middle is an in-out. You can charge with this port. And the DC barrel connector is also an in-out. So we could put solar power in here. And this is also where the magic happens for ham radio QRP operators. I've adjusted my camera so that we can really see the screen of the Shard Geek Storm 2. Long pressing the button turns it on. Everything is going to happen through this button, either with a short press or a long press. A long press will take us into our menu. And then a short press will just navigate through the settings box on the left hand side. And a long press would pull us into the settings or the sub menu on the right hand side. So let's just get at it. Let's talk about this ham radio uh, capability that we have with the Storm 2. Long press, we're going to go into the sub menu of DC. See, I'm at 13 volts. Well, you know what? Let's say that my radio wants to operate at 9 volts. You saw me navigate to the minus 1 volt. Press and hold. Watch what happens. It just goes down 1 volt at a time. I can operate my radio at 9 volts. And if I want to just go ahead and uh, move forward from here and turn it on, I go down to the on, which is not highlighted, and I would press it till it gives me a warning. And the warning really, it doesn't want me to plug any input. In other words, power in when this DC barrel port is output selected, meaning I'm sending power out. It's forcing you to long press to confirm you're following the directions. And now you can see that on is highlighted. If I navigate over to X, it just means that I'm getting out of this menu screen and my DC out at my barrel port connector is going to be at nine volts. We'll demonstrate that once I get my FX4CR set up. But hey, I want to run my FX4CR at 13.8. So I come back in here. I'm going to go up to 13. And then I'm going to select the uh, plus one, uh, point 0.1 volt, and I'm going to go to 13.8. And now my output to my FX4CR is going to be at 13.8 volts. This is the unique thing about this power pack, is that we can set the voltage that will make our ham radios happy. The other things that we can do here inside, well, we can get a view of what's going on with the batteries. We can choose whether we wanna see the temperature of the unit at Celsius or Fahrenheit. We can set certain timers to see how long things are running. We can turn our display on uh, so that it goes off after one minute. I have my display on permanently for the purpose of this demonstration. This would turn the entire unit off. Word of caution. The DC and the main power off are independent. So if I try to power this off right now, it's going to come back on because the DC is on. So you have to turn off DC first. See right now DC is on. I'm over here in this menu. Now I am to off. I'm going to long press. Off will become selected. Now I'm going to go over to exit out of this menu with a long press. And now I can go back in and I can turn the entire system off. I'm only letting you know this because it seems that the DC barrel port and the overall power of the unit are independent of each other and there a long press takes it off. So now both the uh, DC barrel port and the entire unit are off. I'm gonna turn the DC power port back on again. All right, back to a long press, back to DC. Go in here, turn it on, because one of the main things I want to, whoops, too many presses, sorry about that. On is flashing, but see it's not selected. Long press and it will become yellow. Yep, there's my warning. And now on is highlighted yellow, which means it is the feature which is selected. Let's get out of here. I'm going to set up the tabletop so you can see me use multiple things at the same time, including my FX4CR. I recently took a trip to Pennsylvania for personal reasons, and everything you see on the screen here went with me, my personal laptop, a cell phone, my tablet, and I also took a work laptop and my work cell phone because I had lots of things that needed to be accomplished. 
And what I want to show you here is that one device took care of everything for me. I took one battery with me, one battery. And oh, by the way, did I say out loud, I took my FX4CR with me. I took one battery with me for all this gear. Now that's not an endless supply of power for all this gear for forever hours. It just means that when I wanted to operate, I could use this battery to watch and listen to anything onto the plane that I wanted to while I was on the flight. When I got there, I could power any of my gear, including my radio, and do things uh, simultaneously. That's the benefit here is that you can power things simultaneously. Let's just stop yakking about it and go ahead and get it set up. Now, I really can't see. Oh, I was lucky. I don't have visibility to the side there, but you're going to watch the top left-hand corner here, and when I plug in my iPhone, you're going to see that it's going to come to life because right now my iPhone is turned off, so it should be coming on momentarily. <laughs> yes, there it is. And now look, all of a sudden in the top left-hand corner, the Shark Geek recognizes it as an output and it starts giving me the wattage that is going out to that particular item. Well, let's say that at the same time, I want to go ahead and I want to get my Samsung tablet going. Let's get that Samsung tablet powered up. Get it plugged in. And let's see if blindly I can find that port underneath the USB-A. Ah, look at that, it worked. You're going to see in a matter of moments that, look at that, there's a second item in the top left corner of the Shard Geek screen that came to life. You also may have noticed that this did a reset on my iPhone. So when you use the USB-A and C here that are interconnected or they're one over top of the other, if you take a device out and plug another in, one of the devices that remains plugged in will temporarily cease charging. And then when the Shard Geek recognizes what's going on, it will send both back into a charge mode. And you can see now that I am charging both devices and I have about eight to nine watts of output power going. You'll notice there's an in and an out on the Shark Geek screen. Well, let's look at the in. I do have a PD charger off to the side here in my ham radio shack. Now let me see if I can snake this cable around and blindly find that port. Where are you? I know you're over here somewhere. Now look at that. We've got input at 11, 14, 15, 15.62 watts in and 7.11 out. So you, you see what's going on here. I am powering multiple devices at the same time and I also am doing pass-through charging. Well, okay, I've got a laptop. Can I use my laptop while I'm also charging these two devices, my iPhone and my tablet? Well, certainly I can. So I'm going to take my Shark Geek plug that came with it, the USB-C cable, and I'm just going to move it. I've unplugged it. So now I no longer have power coming in. And now let's go over here to my laptop and let's show that we can take power out of the Shark Geek and charge and power my laptop. Now, you will notice that these two did not flinch. They didn't turn off and power down and back on again when I did that. That's because that USB-C in out is independent, it would seem. And now I am charging on my laptop. Indeed, I have power now coming into my laptop. So you can see that all three devices are charging and well, this is the beauty of this unit. I can do multiple things at the same time. Now, what about that ham radio that I keep talking about? What about that FX4CR? So here's the one thing you cannot do. You cannot have the USB-C in-out port used at the same time that you're using the barrel connector port. They are so close together that the plugs will not fit. I have a hunch that Shargeek did that on purpose. Maybe they don't want us using them simultaneously. I do not know the answer to that question for sure, but let's go ahead now and see if I can get my power cable for my FX4CR plugged in. Now let's go ahead and turn on our nine volt. So long press, go over to DC. You can see that it is currently in the off position. So we're going to navigate down to on, long press, and now this will come on. It gives me a warning. 
and I'm at 13.8 volts. Actually, I'm at 13.0. So let's go back and let's give ourselves a little bump to get us at 13.8. And here we go, up to 13.8 volts. Now what I'm doing, whoop, let's exit out of here. Exiting out of that menu. Now you can see that I've got my DC out as well as I'm charging two devices at the same time. Let's turn on my FX4CR. My FX4CR is coming on. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? KD4 BMG. Versatility and small form factor are what won me over on the Storm 2, and it's come down in price since I purchased it. You can now often get it under $200 on the Amazon store or directly from Shargeek, and I'll leave affiliate links to both of those below in the description. So I don't mind any longer that she's a beauty queen and needs to be protected. You don't need to protect it. Scratch it up. It's going to work just fine. But pre-poda, if you stop in at the local restaurant and you order your pancakes while they're flipping them over and sizzling up your bacon, you put these out on the table and you're going to have people gathering around marveling at the beauty that is this electronics wizardry, both on the Storm 2 and on the FX4CR. It was great to be able to travel to Pennsylvania. This is airline safe. Put it in my uh, bag that went with me onto the plane, along with my FX4CR, of course. And then with my two laptops, two cell phones, and one FX4CR, I didn't have any trouble whatsoever operating while I was there in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, you can't operate days on end on a single charge. You have to think ahead if you're going to use a single pack like this. But for several hours, you have an awful lot of versatility to run a 20-watt radio along with several other pieces of gear. I take this with me to the local parks when I shoot POTA activations or I'm demonstrating something else because it allows me to run my radio. I take my cameras pre-charged and of course my cell phone pre-charged. But if there ever comes a point in time where I need just a little boost on any one of those electronic devices, I can run my radio and that other gear to get it charged up at the very same time. Incredibly versatile. So it's a keeper. And now it's something that I enjoy showing off. I hope this was useful to you. If you've ever seen this thing show up on the web and you wondered if it was worth the money. Well, for me, it's worth the money that I've paid for it. I paid for it in full. I'm happy I did. I would do it all over again. And I thought I'd share it with you because it's a great piece of ham radio gear for those of you that operate QRP 20 watt rigs. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.